This is a PMR boiler that I've just recently made. As you can see, it's a riveted construction which is then silver soldered to make it watertight. It's an American boiler and it's available as a kit of parts from America and you can find it easily on the internet. The pipework that you can see has been added on extra by myself to suit my own purposes if you like. The boiler comes complete with the safety valve seen at the very top of the steam dome and the water gauge on this right hand side. The boiler runs from solid fuel tablets and they're placed inside this fire chamber there. These two doors at the bottom are purely for controlling the draft. So into there you place about three tablets, <coughs> light them and having put water in the boiler within a few minutes you can raise steam. And you get about five minutes steaming out of three tablets having brought the water up to temperature. Here we have the smoke box, <coughs> which you can see that there. And that copper tube is my attempt at making a superheater. And it's an extra really. Um, it's something I've come up with myself. If you have a look here at the pipework, you can see the steam comes out of the steam dome through that pipe there into the superheater which loops round like that, back out that side, down there, through the globe valve, displacement lubricator and then into the engine. This brass pipe here takes the exhaust from the engine up into the chimney then out to atmosphere. That brass pipe there for the exhaust is an extra over and I've just simply soldered it into the base of that tube which forms a chimney. The finial to the chimney as well is an extra item and if you were to do one you could make one any particular shape that took your fancy. Because it's an American boiler most of the bushes that are supplied with it have American threads in so before I actually went to the trouble of soldering them in, I remade those bushes with ME threads to suit English stuff. Um, the only one that I had to leave as an American thread was that one there for the safety valve there. Between the two goes a brass nipple or a piece of long brass tube which I took the opportunity of cutting in half and joining together with two model engineer threads through that brass collar there that to enable me to connect a 0 to 300 psi gauge for testing purposes of the boiler once it was finished I think if I was doing it again I would remake that bush there um, to be 516 ME thread and recut the thread on the bottom of the brass nipple there to suit leaving the American thread at the top to carry the safety valve and only that, only because really the safety valve is included as part of the kit and it saves buying another one from uh, an English source. So the boiler <coughs> basically works quite simply the fire runs along the bottom of the boiler up through a cutout in the bottom half of the boiler there and then back along the centre of the boiler in five fire tubes which you may just be able to see in that shot there before venting into the smoke box and out through the chimney so it means it's quite an efficient boiler and it does raise steam quite quickly the <coughs> pressure gauge you can see there again is something that I've added on and it's a 0 to 80 psi gauge because the working pressure for the boiler 
is 60 psi <coughs> and that's the, the pressure at which the safety valve blows. This globe valve here is a second tap off from the steam dome to allow a second engine to be run from the boiler at this side but without the benefit of the superheater in the firebox at that side. It's quite an attractive boiler when it's made. Um, if you bought it as a made up kit from America they usually come painted black but because I made it myself I chose not to paint it and left it as polished copper which looks quite good. So there you are. Um, they say it takes about two days to make. I think it took me longer than that. <coughs> but that's partly to do with the fact that along with the kit of materials for the boiler you also get the materials to make the tools that you need to make the boiler. These include enough tool steel to make the rivet snaps see there that's a domed one I'm finally riveting over the rivets that's the swaging tool and that's the pull-up tool <coughs> you also have enough steel there for the bottom dolly for the riveting which goes inside the cylinder of the boiler <coughs> this being held in the vise <coughs> and the boiler shell slipped on over there and the rivet heads located internally into that dome cut out there in that dolly. The other thing you get steel for <coughs> is the flaring tool which is basically uh, a piece of hexagon uh, steel which you cut in half and shape at one end with a 45 degree taper for flaring out the fire tubes and then with a stepped arrangement at the other end for converting the flare into a, a rivet effect really on the fire tube in the boiler prior to soldering. So all that's included you just have to do the machining to make it work. So there we are. <coughs> this end of the boiler I've fitted a one-way valve for filling the boiler with water as steaming progresses and you can see there the aluminium end plate which just simply needs a little bit of fettling and also the holes drilling for fixing to the boiler shell. The tie rods as well that you can see there, there's four of those go right through from one end to the other they need cutting to length and tapping yeah, or threading to take the nuts which hold the housing together. The smoke box door again fixes onto the boiler shell there and the base of the chimney also fits on there. This needs boring out so that's quite a tricky operation because the chimney is actually just a sliding fit inside that. So there you can see that. <coughs> the doors themselves on the smoke box and also the fire box come as die cast aluminium. Just need a simple bit of fettling and then drilling for the for the hinge pins there. The hinge pins being formed out of one sixteenth inch brass rod. So they're quite nice. <coughs> work quite well. The handle itself is made out of a single piece of brass cut into two, one piece to make the spindle, second piece to make the handle part which goes through the spindle through a tiny hole and is actually riveted over and the far end of the spindle if you can see there needs bending over to locate on the back of the top of the smoke box a little bit fiddly that but uh, once done it works well and I would recommend annealing the end of the spindle before you bend it just to ensure it doesn't uh, break off. So there we have it.